Hi, I'm Gerard Saylor from the L.D. Park Public Library in beautiful downtown Lake Mills, Wisconsin. When I was a kid growing up and I would go to libraries, I would look for typical library stuff, uh, novels, storybooks, picture books. But I would also look for things that interested me as, as a boy. Uh, things like about dogs or cars and trucks I wasn't too interested in. But one thing I was always looked for and never really find much of was guns. Pistol, shotgun, handgun, all the kind of stuff that guys are interested in. And usually there wasn't anything. If there was, it was old stuff, like uh, Gun Owner's Book of Care Repair and Improvement from 1974. Weapons Through the Ages from 1976, which doesn't talk about guns so much as artillery, edged weapons, and then it gets into firearms and knights and horses. Great American Guns and Frontier Fighters from 1961, uh, kind of weapons of the Old West with lousy illustrations. That's all it has, and then, you know, that's not much better. And I wouldn't talk about the guns so much, you just have kind of tales about Old West gunfights. And then you'd have some stuff that was older but good, like 1979's uh, The Complete Handgun, 1300 to the Present by Ian V. Hogg. Ian V. Hogg has written lots of firearm history, and he does a really good job. I, for instance, there's this nice schematic of a Mauser handgun, but, you know, that's one book out of nothing. And so when I got into this profession, one of the things I started to do is, you know, all these things I had an interest in, I would start collecting in those areas because I know that I'm reading it, and I know that a lot of other people want to read it as well, but the shelves are blank in those spots. And there's the basic guides I would get, like ABCs of Reloading, 7th edition, not that I've actually started reloading yet, I just haven't. But then uh, Flaterman's Guide to Antique American Firearms and Their Values, eh, that's not so interesting. But then you start getting into more uh, annual stuff, like Gun Digest. This one's from 2006, or Guns Illustrated. You got old Guns Digest from 2001, one from 1999. Just kind of listing all the new stuff that's coming out every year. And usually they would have, they always have articles in the front, like old six guns and new six guns and new handguns and new developments and reloading this and reloading that. And so that's a good start. And uh, what's more we have, I started to get uh, a little more specific about other things. That was a piece of lint here. So this is one we just got. Uh, Glock, second edition. How to accessorize and tune your Glock. Performance evaluations of all models and chain rings by Patrick Sweeney, who's written a number of gun books. And yeah, you can say it's a Glock. What all there is there to do with it? But, uh, well, if you want to know, Sweeney talks about it. He talks all about the different variations in the models, all the different calibers available. Uh, customizations like for barrels and sights and uh, trigger enhancements and all this other stuff. I had a Glock and I didn't really like it, I sold it. So this book isn't too interesting to me, but uh, I bought it and went on the shelf and like that, it went out. People like this stuff. Uh, here's a newer kind of general one, Gun, a visual history. This is uh, pretty brand new, I think from like 2006. Rifles and muskets, historical stuff like, for instance, European hunting guns. And this is a DK book, Dwelling in Kindersley. Kindersley. They always have uh, fantastic uh, photography and illustrations. It's got these kind of spy guns, like silence guns, and there was another one in here of a pipe that was actually a, a handgun. Now, it doesn't matter. Machine guns, submachine guns, the brown vest from the uh, British Army. Carried that for about 50 years or 100 years or something. So all sorts of fun stuff to kind of browse through if you really like firearms. And then uh, along with the Glock, one of the most popular rifles nowadays is the AR-15 pattern rifle. And this is also by Patrick Sweeney. There's two volumes. This one came out a few years ago and this one like a couple years ago. And this one is really fantastic. It talks about all the different manufacturers, uh, manufacturing processes, differences among the different kinds of rifles, sights, stocks, barrels, uh, trigger groups, magazines, uh, bolts, what to look for when buying a gun, um, how to put things together, just really well done. Even I think it talks about some uh, competition in here as well, as, as, as so does the Glock one. Uh, really fun book, really makes me want to get one. I still don't have the money, but I'd really like to get one. Uh, volume 2 is not as good. If you're going to read one only, read this one. Uh, volume 2 goes into a little more detail some other things, but I wasn't as impressed with Volume 1. Uh, Rifles of the World, 3rd edition, 
wrote the World's Definitive Guide to Centerfire and Rimfire Rifles by John Walter. This is also pretty neat. This came out in 2006. Uh, 600 pages of historical and modern. Uh, goes by country and by manufacturer and variations on the manufacturing. And of course, just for Mauser alone, you've got 41 pages uh, going from uh, auto loaders to the famous Mauser bolt action. And they even have the MAS by the French. The MAS uh, 7.5 millimeter 1941, and I'm sorry, 1949 semi-auto. Yeah, there's a bunch of these that came on the surplus market about, I don't know, eight years ago. And I thought they were really cool, and I really wanted to get one. And the price was about in my range, but the problem was it came with this, this goofy 7.5 millimeter French caliber. And first off, the, the caliber was difficult to get. Uh, second off, when you could get it, uh, it was really expensive. And third, I wasn't doing any reloading, and I'm still not, so I wasn't going to get it, and I wasn't going to rebore the chamber to try to you know, on the barrel. And so anyway, I never got one. Uh, but what's good having all these weapons and firearms if you don't know how to shoot the darn thing? So I kind of went a little overboard, and I got a bunch of shooting guides. These are mainly all pistols here, though. Uh, two of the best ones are Defensive Handgunning, a treatise on handgun carry and use by Glenn Rayberg. I plugged this one once before, I think last summer. Rayberg's a Wisconsin guy, and this is self-published, and it's really well done. I don't know if he hired an editor or copyrighted to help him out or not, but there's no errors in here. He doesn't have as many illustrations, I think, as would be helpful. And when they are in there, they're a little small and they're all uh, kind of a little bit of grainy black and white, but this is really good. A step up in production quality, not so much information, is Tactical Pistol Shooting, Your Guide to Tactics at Work by Eric Lawrence. Uh, the illustrations here are fantastic. They go step by step uh, from different uh, vantage points. They're taking the photographs. And the instructions are really clear, and he does it step by step. Uh, for each photograph, he has a specific information about what he wants to talk about and things that he's highlighting. And so that's really fun. Uh, there's another one from Wisconsin Guy, Personal Protection Handbook, Comprehensive Training Manual for Hockey. You know, everybody says Comprehensive Training Manual. And, you know, I don't know. Uh, for handguns, shotguns, and rifles. So this is kind of nice. Uh, nice. Uh, Dr. Leonard M. Brewer, Ph.D., because he talks about all three uh, sections there, handgun, shotgun, rifle. And I think they both talk about uh, competition a little bit. Effective handgun defense, a comprehensive guide to concealed carry. Comes with a little piece of tape on the front by Frank W. James. He's also a well-known gun writer. And probably one of the most most well-known gun writers is Masada Ayub, uh, the Gun Digest Book of Combat Handgun, 6th edition. Ayub is really well-known. Uh, sometimes people really don't agree with him, and you get online and you see all these different arguments back and forth. But the book is really good. This came out in 2007. It has all sorts of stuff. Uh, women in shooting, uh, how to pick the right handgun to make it fit your hand, uh, marksmanship, uh, different variations on uh, customization, things like that. Uh, proper storage, you know, all the basic stuff. Uh, drawing from uh, concealment, different kinds of holsters, ammunition choices, caliber choices, uh, revolver versus semi-automatic, all the standard arguments you hear about. But he's very fair and even-minded. He'll go and he'll talk about each one. I think Azayub does a good job. If I'm pronouncing his name correctly, I have no idea. I don't really care either. I'm probably never going to meet the guy. But uh, these are just some gun books, um, one of the things I like to look at. And if you're really into sniping, you've got a whole bunch of sniper stuff. With like almost eight years of war, there's been all these different uh, sniper autobiographies and kind of informational things. And one of the most recent ones is Sniper One by Sergeant Dan Mills, who's in the British Army. Uh, he served in Iraq. And also a newer one is To Be a Military Sniper by Gregory Mast and Hans Halberstadt which is interesting to look through because it talks about all the different training and tracking and just a lot of work to be able to succeed through one of those sniper schools and then do that as a living. Uh, pretty impressive work. But that's some of the stuff here. Uh, I'm George Saylor from the LD Farm Public Library in beautiful downtown Lake Mills, Wisconsin. Uh, take a look at our blog. Take a look at the catalog online if you live outside of Lake Mills or heck, outside of Wisconsin. Just look for any of these books that might interest you. and. Uh, if you want, you can give me a call, send me an email, uh, shout. Have a good day.